TradeTheMBI.com. This is John's reports for the 24th of February. Our things went pretty much as expected. Uh, we just floated back and forth uh, right around that uh, 4,008. And guess where we're at right now? That's right, 4,008. Interesting. Not really. We <laughs> sort of expected it, which is exactly why we're there. But you've had both a short decline as well as uh, not much. Uh, by interest, the rising steel was enough to hold things in position where they are. We're still looking at uh, continuation of, uh, you might want to call it distribution from the extreme histogram here. We're still below the red line, uh, meaning that when selling starts, uh, I would not count on that 50% holding up very well. Um, but you'd have to see a spike of the white coming back up, and that's not taking place, or a pivot lower here of the steel, and uh, any move of uh, orange. Uh, DOC moving back to the upside is definitely going to create a significant headwind. And again, it, it all comes back to the NASDAQ and where it uh, fits within this. Um, still holding on to uh, just basic support. It's uh, very similar to what we're seeing from the S&P readings, but a little bit stronger because you've got that uh, clear uh, declining magenta here. Um, the only thing really is just the short-term buyer support that's holding it up. Um, you've got a full reset of uh, mid-term buyers in that. So they're just everyone's on the sidelines at this particular stage, just waiting to see um, the next set of data to find out whether or not things have changed or if they're going to continue. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, hope optimism. Um, and I think that a lot of it is they really want to see a build of shorts because that will be the impetus to drive it because I just don't think there's enough momentum from a uh, buyer standpoint to drive things. Uh, they're just going to have to wait to see if they can get something that will start the ball rolling. And that would be the uh, obvious pain trade would be to the upside here because uh, it's the least expected. And we know the market loves to do what is least expected. Um, definitely flight into treasuries again, uh, reducing uh, yield slightly. And that's, it's just a tough one because do you want safety or do you want to stay where the risk asset is? Uh, either way, you're losing in that situation. I mean, if you're more concerned about capital preservation, you're going to move to treasuries, but inflation is outstripping the return on that, so it's not a benefit. Uh, oil still holding up in that uh, upper 70 range. It's better, but it's, uh, you know, and like I've pointed out, the longer this goes as it has, the more adapted people become to where that range is. Is it still excessive? Yeah. Could it be a lot lower? Definitely. Are they going to do anything about it? Unlikely. Gold. Uh, gold's going to be in this little bit of uh, technical spiral here for just a little bit, but we can start to see the potential of uh, things changing. I mean, it's uh, really oversold in this particular case. We filled in positive extremes, and the earliest ones were going back to this, which would take you back to the 17, uh, which would be quite a significant move, but um, not entirely impossible uh, if you get another return of shorts. But I think that we're probably reaching that point where the spike of the white is getting us close to that zero. And at that point, I think it probably stabilized because they're just at the end of the day. More money's being printed, more debt's being acquired. Um, your alternative currencies are definitely going to be uh, more attractive. The euro continues its soft slide. Um, that's just because there's a lot of capital flight from the eurozone as they still see more opportunities in the dollar than they do in the euro construct. Bitcoin just filling back a little bit of this giant uh, spike back up, and I think it's got to come back towards that 22. Definitely if it holds on the 76 uh, would be a strong move for it, but it's in weak mode, and we also have a DOC spread that it just developed within there. ETH uh, looking identical. Not too much difference, but you can see you're at higher highs, lower shakeout. Um, those things all spell for, you know, continued soft pullback, but could be a building situation and again i just had uh, the charts up and then i get the early morning it's like when they're loading the historical data it uh, data disconnects and then reconnects and then you just wait 
for it to finally upload it again. It's bizarre. Um, still trying to figure it out and I'm not getting very far with that. As always, though, um, I will update you on anything relevant, but I think right now we're just sort of waiting uh, for something to break. And at this particular stage, I, I still think that uh, the fact that it's held up as well as it has really puts more pressure to the upside uh, for a breakout because as shorts are unable to drive it below uh, key points, uh, you would definitely see a lot more buying interest too for some short covering because it becomes an easy one because you have so much uh, pressure uh, going against it. Of course, you know, you're in your weekly OPEX here with a Friday. So it could be a fun ride intraday. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk in later.